All right, here is our Math 1 zombie project. So, um, we are taking a look at this, and I'm going to do an example for you, one of my own examples, so if you turn yours in with the same exact information, you will get a zero, because I know you copied off me. Um, but essentially, we're dealing here with um, two situations, okay? So we have this cutesy little thing that I wrote, um, and then we have two pieces of information, okay? You have a table um, with your growth of zombies, and you also have this memo talking about the evacuation, okay? Now, this will not be filled out um, by me. It'll be filled out by your, you or your student, if you're a parent watching this, okay? And they will have chosen from a table of here. And once I get them all filled out, I'll post the, uh, the PDF, a picture of it online so that you can see what you were signed up for because I know they will forget. So everybody needs to have a different table here and you'll just sign with your name and hopefully they transferred this information onto this page like I told them. The other thing is they also need to figure out their city. Um, okay, I have a list of pre-approved cities. Um, if there's a different city that your student wants and once again, if they sign up for this, and then, you know, I'll post that, what they signed up for. Um, if they decide on a different one, they have to get it approved through me, and then we would just put it on, and they would sign their name. Okay? So, you should know your city. And for my city, I'm actually going to choose Beja, Portugal. Okay. So I'd fill that in here, and then I'd go look up online and find the most recent population. For Beja, I found in 2011 the most recent was 35,854. Okay. So you need to have this, the table, the city, and the population to start us off. Okay. Now, um, in this memo, it talks about the evacuation of people. Okay, and notice right here, this number on your copy will be different. Yours will be 2,500. Okay, I did mine differently for my example. Okay, um, so now, here's what you need to do. Okay, here's kind of the instructions. So, you take the city you are assigned and the data showing the rate of infection, um, and you're going to find out how long it would take to infect the whole city, accounting for the population changing due to evacuations. Okay, so this is a presenting project, so it will be presented in class. Um, now that can be done various ways, but uh, let's talk about what you'll need. So the city, your population, the table, okay, and the memo. Um, you will take those two pieces of information. They need to be written as an explicit equation, a table, and a graph. So for this one, you've already got the table. You'll just need to write the equation and the graph. Um, for the memo, you will have to make a, a table, the graph, and the explicit equation. Okay. Now I have to help out with that. Um, there's these uh, printed off sheets that you can get that have a lot of the information. Okay. Pretty much all the information that's needed will be on that. So using that can kind of help guide what you need. So you need how many days it'll take until the whole city is infected, okay, and what that population is. The key features, those ones, and how they relate to the context of the function, this idea of the zombies and the evacuation, okay. Now when you present it, you can just put it on poster board and present it that way. You can do it a port vote portfolio style, printed paper, put it together. At the very least, just have this filled out to use, but you won't get as many points for presentation based off that one. Okay, um, you can also use some sort of computer program, um, like a PowerPoint software, um, um, even a video software. If you made a video, I would count that as the presentation. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can do this, and if you have any other questions, um, please talk to me. Okay. There's also a written portion, but this, um, we've got some leeway. I suppose I should probably have changed it to artistic. 
proportion because if you would prefer to draw a picture, do a comic, write a story, um, maybe even something else, if there's something else you can do for that um, that will incorporate what's happening, the story, um, the math will be put into it, it'll match your city, the information you have, kind of a fun way to incorporate it into something mm, that doesn't always feel mathematical through that art. Um, and as you can see with our rubric, that's going to be worth six points um, to do that. For the features and contextual meanings, there's worth 28 points. The tables and equations are four points. And the graph um, of the two lines where they intersect and what it means are six points. For a total of 44 points, so it's worth quite a bit of points here. Okay? So that's all the information. Please feel free to email me. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Here's my email at twillaschools.org or come in and talk to me. All right, so let's get going here. Let me just um, do these examples of what we need to do. All right, so I'm going to hold off on this graph and where they intersect um, for a bit, okay? And um, Let's go to my table. So my table, it started out at 0, 5, then 120. So it went something like this. And this is days. This is zombies. And then it was 2 and 80, and 3 and 320. Okay? Now, do I need to finish this table and use up the whole space? I could if I wanted to, but I don't have to, okay? Oh, that might not be right. That's much better. Okay, so that's up to five days, and you can see my zombies are growing pretty quickly. So now for my equation, okay? So we have to decide, is this a linear or exponential? Okay, so 5 to 20, we could add 15, but if I add 15, will that get me to 80? Nope, so it's most likely not linear. So let's do exponential, so timesing. So 5 times 4 would get me to 20, times 4, is that 80? Yes, it is. Times 4, yes. So remember, for our equations, we need to know our growth, which mine is timesing by 4, and where we start. Okay which for me was at five zombies, right? We look at the zero days, we go to the five zombies, that's where we're going to start. And then I go f of x equals my starting, which was five. What do I do to five? I times it by four. How many times? Repeatedly. So I get f of x equals five times four to the x. That's my equation, okay? That's my equation. So now there's some information that I can use from that. Okay, so let's look at where we want to go first here. All right. Thinking about these features of functions, um, we usually want to graph first, but I, I guess what I need to decide, is this graph going to be discrete or continuous? Remember, continuous is if it's a line. Discrete would be more like dots, right? That you don't have the in-between. So let's think about our context, okay? Um, am I going to have in-between pieces here? Okay. Are we going to have a uh, half of a zombie? Okay. We could have, you know, half of a day... And maybe we could have like 16 zombies, which would be in between there. But I can't have half a zombie. So I would most likely call this discrete, okay? And what would be that contextual idea here is because, you know, um, it's number of zombies. And they have to be whole numbers, integers. So that represents, that contextual represents that... 
I won't have like half a zombie, though I, I suppose you could argue, continuous as well, that someone's in the process of changing into a zombie and not fully a zombie. Um, so honestly, it kind of depends on which one you'd like to go with um, as to what you would end up with. Now we can look at the second one, increasing or decreasing. Well, the number of zombies is going up, so it's definitely increasing. Okay, what does that mean? According to our story, okay, the zombie population is rising. My goodness, I need to write better, don't I? Can't spell either. All right. Okay. So now, there's a few ways that I could go to graph this. Okay, because a graph will help me. I could try to do it by hand. I'm going to recommend not doing that. Okay, because we have that awesome tool, that online graphing tool called Desmos.com. Okay, so that's where I would go. And then I, using my equation, I would just type that in to Desmos, exactly how I see it. And then I would graph that. Okay. Now, I'm going to hold off on showing you my graph until I graph the other stuff as well. The reason I'm doing that is because um, it'll the graph will help me with some of this stuff. I suppose we could do the y-intercept, because from the table I should be able to see that. But my y-intercept is 0, 5. But, and what does that mean? That means at the start, at 0 days, well, there are 5 zombies. So at the start of the outbreak, the city had five zombies. Okay. All right. Now, this rate of change, that remember, for exponential, you need an interval, okay, for rate of change. So we could think of it as our growth. Okay, how is this growing? Well, we're timesing by four. Okay, which means we're quadrupling, you know, timesing by four, so we're quadrupling zombies every day. The number of them. Okay, so on linear, that rate of change would be slope. And I still want to show you how we think of this as rate of change as well, um, to kind of see how that works as well. All right, so we've got quite a bit of stuff there to go with. But now let's take a look at our population evacuation. All right, so this one, let's think. Okay, before, before it starts, before we start evacuating people, okay, how many people do I have? Well, my population what was that, 35,854. Okay, so here's my number of people, my population in the city. This would be days again. Okay, so at zero days, I had this population. Now, what's happening? Okay, it says we're getting 1,200 people out of the city every day. So what is happening to my population? Well, we're losing 1,200 people every day. Okay, so I want to fill it out probably about to the same place. So I'm going to subtract those. So I go 35,854 minus 1,200. That gives me 34,654 after day one. And then minus 1,200 again to get 33,454. And then 32,254. Then 31,54. ,54. And finally 29,854. Now, obviously, this will keep going. So that's why we make our explicit equation. So now this one's linear because we're subtracting by the same number each time. So I know it's linear, so it's going to be, we'll call this one g of x. g of x equals, what did we start with? My population, 3, 5, 8, 54. We're subtracting 1,200 each day, so that one gets times by x. Okay, so once again, I look at this one. Is it discrete or continuous? 
Okay. Well, can you evacuate half a person? No, but could half a person be evacuating? Yeah, so once again, it kind of depends on how you want to phrase it. If you're going to choose discrete, you need to say something like, you know, I can only evacuate full people. If you're going to go with continuous, you would say, you know, people are continually evacuating. Um, they're just not completely evacuated yet. So um, that's kind of the contextual meaning you'd have to put into either one of those. Now, looking at this, my numbers are going down, so we're decreasing. So what does that mean? You know, why is it decreasing? You know, the population is going down because people are leaving. They're evacuating. Okay. Now, for linear, um, the rate of change is pretty easy. It's that slope, right? And we could graph it as well, and we could find that rate of change through that, which we'll be able to see when we look at if we do it through the interval, too. So we'll do it both ways, just like we did exponential. So if we do the slope, it's 1,200 over 1, and a negative 1,200, right? So what that means is we lose... 1,200 people every day, right? That's the context there, all right? And that rate of change will mean the same thing. We can see how we could do that one through an interval as well. All right, so the other one we could do is a y-intercept, okay? Because that's where we start, right? So our y-intercept is 0, 35,854. So what does that mean? That's our population at the start of people, not of zombies. Okay. So, now we can, on Desmos, we can use our equation here, and we can graph that. Okay. That's why I would hold off, because that's going to help me see what kind of window I need to make. All right, so a few things about Desmos to help make it easier. When you go to Desmos, you'll click to the calculator, and it'll give you here. This, obviously, is where you put your equations. Notice I put them in exactly how I wrote them. Okay, they gave me the colors there. So I know I can only see red. I can't see my blue. Why not? Because my y-intercept is so high. That's just a 10. So over here, you can click on this. You can click on projector mode, which makes the graphs thicker. And then you can adjust your x and your y axes to help you see the whole picture. Okay. Something else you can do, if you click up here on that settings and you click over here, you can change from discrete to continuous and you can change the colors as well. You can also put them into tables and some other things like that. Okay. So there's multiple ways that you could end up um, doing this. Okay. Um, but if you decide to go discrete, it would look something like this. Okay decide to go continuous, it'd look like this. I'll probably just keep mine as continuous, um, but we'll, we'll treat them basically the same way. Now, from this graph, and notice I changed mine to green. So green is our evacuation formula, and purple is our zombie formula, okay? So looking back here, we need to figure out our domain and our range. Now remember, domain is all the x values that make sense in our story problem, and range is all the y values. Okay, so looking at our evacuation, can we go back to negative days? No, so we'd start here at zero. The x value of zero would be where we start. Okay, and we go to here, to our x-intercept, which by the way is another 29.87 Okay. okay, and what does that x-intercept mean? Well, the x value, remember, stands for days. So it would take us 29.878 days to have 0y, and y is our population. So what's our contextual meaning? You know, 29.878, basically 30 days to empty the city. Okay, that's what that contextual meaning is. Now, going back here, 
Okay, so beyond that, we have nobody in there. So this would be our domain for our problem. And we can actually go into um, Desmos, and you can use brackets right after your equation, and you could go 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 30, basically. And you could type that in right there, and then it would cut it off just at those pieces. Honestly, you probably should do that. But there's our domain. So domain is just x value, so we'd go 0 to 29.878. So you write that in like this, 0 to 29.878. And what does that represent? Okay, here it represents um, days from start to finish of, exact, of evacuation. Okay, now the range, range are the y values. So we start here, down here at zero, right? And we go clear up till our population of 35,854. So our range would be from zero to 35,854. What does that mean? That's just our population. Okay, how many people are in the city? All right, now um, that rate of change. So um, we'll get to that one in a second. Let's look now, we need to do the same stuff for our zombie. So what's our domain, what's our range? Okay, well our domain here would be from, okay, where we start, which was right here. So once again, that really shouldn't be part of our graph. Okay, our domain till when? Okay, well maybe it helps to talk about what's going on right here. Okay, what does this mean where they intersect? Okay, x remember was days. Y was um, either population of people or zombies. Okay, so let's actually go back here. So I made just a little bit nicer graph right here. So where do these functions meet, intersect? Well, they intersect right here at 6.235 to 28,371.853. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, like we said, if x is days in 6.23 five days, the number of zombies and the number of people in the city will be the same, which would mean that all the people in the city have been turned into zombies. Okay? So the X is day when all the people are zombies. Okay, that's what you're kind of looking at there. Okay, so for our domain here, that's where our domain would end because if there's no more people, you can't make any more zombies. Okay, so from 0 to 6.235. Okay, and then our range would be from 5, right? Because we start at 5 up to... 28,371. Point whatever that was. What was that? 0.853. Okay, and what's the meaning? You know, that's the population of zombies. The number, this is days, right? Until everybody's turned into zombies. All right, now, x-intercept for exponential. Remember with exponentials, you have that asymptote. So our asymptote is going to be here at the x-axis. So it's actually never going to have an x-intercept, okay? Because there's no point where there's no zombies. All right. So we've got that information for you guys there from my example. That's how I would do it. Okay, yours is obviously going to be different. I would suggest using Desmos 
to help you out with that stuff. Now, oh, rate of change. So rate of change, if we're thinking about this, okay, for the linear, we'd go down here and here. So this y value minus this y value would give us a difference of 7482.147. Then this x value to this x value would give us a difference here, so it would be 6.235. So the rate of change, if we're doing it based off this information, would be 7482.147 over 6.235, which if we type that into a calculator, we get 12... 100.023577. So basically, what we said, okay, because we're dealing with a situation where it's not exact, um, that's why we get that little bit of a decimal. But that's our rate of change. So per day, once again, that's how many we're losing. Now, if we do it for our exponential, okay, the difference here is we're going up from 5 to this number, so I'd go 28371.853 minus 5 to find that difference, that y value of 28366.853 and then once again 6.25, so I'd go 28366.853 divided by 6.235 to get the that one, which would be about 4549.6155. So basically about 4549.50 zombies per day. We're quadrupling them, them, remember, so when we're down here, there's less and less, but they move so quickly. But if we were to graph that linearly, that's how many zombies essentially per day we'd be having, okay? So that one would kind of go here with this, the 4549.62, okay, meaning the same thing. All right, so there we go, guys. There's some basics there for that. Now, one other thing I would want to add, um, make sure you're using your numbers. If you have questions, let me know. If you need your data, let me know. Pick a good city. Fill this out, and then give me a good presentation, okay? Use Desmos for your graph. You can graph by hand, but Desmos is so much easier. Now, for your artistic part, you need to blend that math in, okay, to the story using the information you found out based off where they intersect, okay? So um, be creative with this. You will need to, if you're doing something other than a story, you need to make sure you approve it through me first. But, you know, use that city. So like Beja, if I'm looking at Beja here... So, I'm going to use stuff like this map. I'll look it up. Use these roads, okay? There's, in the center of town, there's this big tower surrounded by walls, you know? That would figure into my story or my picture or my comic, okay? Here's a view from up here looking down and seeing the city, okay? I would use this information to help color my story. I would also use this information I got from my graph. The contextual meaning, all this information I would incorporate, synthesize into here, so that at the end you come up with a really great story that fits in mathematically, fits in with um, the city I'm at, um, to make it really have some fun with it. So there we go guys, there's kind of a, an example, an outline, a basic idea um, on the presentation. Make sure you have a good way to do it, you spend some time on this and uh, make things look really great. So other than that, make sure you let me know if you have any questions um, or if you need any help or anything like that. And good luck with it. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with.